Trishy, Ruth, Kara, Jethro, Pugger, Stephen, John, Marilyn, and I could keep on going and going and going and going. The list wouldn't end. It'll take me days to list all the orphans in the world, all the orphans I know. According to UNICEF, 10,000 children become orphans every day. 10,000 children become orphans every day. 10,000 children are left alone to fend for themselves. 10,000 children with no family, no education, no money on their own. If anyone thinks himself to be religious and yet does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. Pure, undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep ourselves unstained by the world. You and I can peacock our spirituality before everybody. We can parade around looking good on the outside. We can speak a good fight. We can say all the right things. But when God looks at us, He inspects our hearts because He is looking for real religion. He's looking for pure, undefiled religion. Men and women, young and old, who, whose hearts are His. Hearts and lives filled with His love. Hearts and lives filled with His compassion. Hearts and lives filled with His mercy. So much so that out of the overflow of our hearts, we are compelled to reach out and to give to the most vulnerable in our society. To the most vulnerable that are near and around us, the lost and the least and the lost in our society, orphans and widows. To me, this is God first living. To me, this is God first giving. This is real religion. When we put aside our stuff and we take hold of God and His heart becomes our heart. I believe that this will protect us from fake religion. When our hearts are His, when we activate our lives the way God would want us to activate our lives, when, when, when our hearts are His, when our hearts are true religion, when our hearts are God-first living and, and God-first giving, our hearts are protected from being defiled and corrupted by the worldly choices we would make because we choose Jesus rather than this world. We choose Jesus and His ways. You see, in the eyes of God, real religion is doing what Jesus would do. That's real religion. And try as we may, we may there's no way around this. Living, breathing, Jesus' followers do what Jesus did. Defend the cause of the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the rights of the poor and the oppressed. Psalm 82 verse 3. Learn to do right and seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Isaiah 1 17. Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes or, or daily food, and, and if one says to him, go and I'll wish you well, keep warm and be well fed, but does nothing about that person's physical state, what good is that? James 2, 15 to 16. I want to repeat Isaiah 1.17. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Reprove ruthless. Reprove the ruthless. Defend the orphan. Plead for the widow. You know in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, the Holy Spirit says to the church, to you and I, 
By now you ought to be, and then it says you ought to be teachers. By now you ought to be. The Spirit of God is talking to the church and say, by now in your followership of Jesus, your maturity should have got to such a place where you're not so much consuming as you are giving away your life. You see, spiritual maturity is not marked by how much you know about the Bible. It's about how your lives look like and behave like Jesus. That's what it is. But now you, you ought to be in your relation, in our relationship with Jesus, in our following Him, in our knowing His words, in our living His way, in our doing His works, in our surrendering to His will. We ought to be learning to do good, seeking justice. Reproving the ruthless, defending the orphan, pleading for the widow. You see, I believe that is spiritual maturity. 17% of the children, 17% of the children in KZN are orphans. KZN has the largest number of children in our country. And on our doorsteps, are thousands of orphaned children. Real and social orphans. Children without moms and dads. Children with no family, no education, no money on their own. Eugene Peterson writes the, the message, the, uh, from the message, James chapter 1, verse 27 says, Reach out to the homeless and the loveless in their plight, and guard against corruption from this godless world. Reach out. Proverbs 29 verse 7 says this, A righteous person knows the rights of the poor. A spiritually mature Jesus follower knows the rights of the poor. A wicked man does not understand such things. And all the scriptures encourage us to do is, is uh, reach out to the orphan, reach out to the orphans, and reach out to the widows near and around. Just reach out. No program. You don't need a program. You don't need a ministry. You don't need some sort of strategic plan. Just you and I are doing the old fashioned thing of visiting orphans and widows. That's all it is. Actually, it's, it's reaching out to the people that Jesus would hang out with. But that means we've got to, we've got to take some time out of our self-consumed lives and our self-consumed living. It's so hard, isn't it, to, to live away from ourselves. But you know what we must do is we must never forget that the vulnerable loved hanging around Jesus they loved hanging around Jesus. You know why? Because around Jesus, they would experience the love of God. Around Jesus, they would experience the compassion of the Father, the mercy of God. Around Jesus, they would, they would hear the words of Hosea when, when the prophet said, For you, for in you, the fatherless find compassion. They knew this man was not a mere man. They could, they could sense, they could feel, they could encounter the reality of God in Jesus. In you, the fatherless find love and mercy and compassion. Do you remember the time when the disciples uh, bought uh, were around Jesus and they were chatting and like, hey, hey, you know, this is really cool. We're really looking good. What do you think people think? Oh, we like number one, number two in the show here. And then one of the moms brought their child to Jesus. And, Jesus and, and the disciples said, hey, 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 you can't come here. This is for the elite. This is for real religious people. And what Jesus did, do you remember the, the little rebuke? Hey, don't. Keep the children away from me. For such is the kingdom of God.
Deuteronomy 10, verse 18 says, He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow, and He loves the alien. And that's not the oak, that green little thing with those funny ears. It's the refugees, the people who don't belong. Do you understand xenophobia? It's from the pit of hell. It's not the heart of God. God loves everyone, especially the disenfranchised, especially the vulnerable. And if there's anything in us that says that's okay, there's something wrong with us, we must repent immediately because our hearts should swell with the love of God and the mercy and compassion of God. We in Australia about 15 years ago with our friends, our kids were younger, and, uh, and I don't know what happened, but we just heard this, this noise going on, and we switched on the news, and xenophobia broke out in Austra Australia. First world. First world. Clean and tidy, neat, everything is spot on in Australia. It's a beautiful country. And something happened with one guy, and he saw a guy who was slightly darker than normal. I think he was Italian, and they thought he was an Arab, and so they went ballistic, and they just started beating on, up on anyone who didn't look like them. No wonder Jesus challenges us to preach the gospel to the poor so that we'll find the love of God completely and unconditionally loved. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow, and he loves the alien, giving him food and clothing. God the Father is very protective over the vulnerable. Very protective. Very protective over orphans and widows. And I'm just going to put this in, and he needs us. He needs us in the game. He needs us to be his arms and legs and feet and mouth and heart and he needs us. He needs our money. He needs us to demonstrate His love to the vulnerable. When you just show up, when we just show up and reach out and demonstrate the love and compassion of God to people in need, God opens the door for us to tell them about the One who loves them so much. We just need a pitch up. We have to push aside our stuff. When we pitch up and, and, and we tell about the wonders of God's love, they will hear this. They will hear the resounding words of Jesus who said this, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Satan is keeping very quiet right now because he knows what he's done. He's orphaned the world. He's a, he has caused such a drift, a rift between us and God. But we don't know. Outside of Christ, we don't know we've been orphaned. We don't know we're without a heavenly Father. We don't know because He has lied to us that we're okay and our self-sustaining lives are good. That's the way it's meant to be. It's not meant to be like that. We're meant to be adopted into the family of God. God sent His Son to seek and save the lost. He sent His Son to adopt us as sons and daughters, not to be orphaned. Deuteronomy 15, verse 11 says, there, For there will never cease to be poor in the land. It's been like that from the beginning of creation. There will never be an end to the poor. And then God says, Therefore I command you, you shall open wide your hand, my brother. Open wide your heart, my brother and sister to the needy and the poor in the land. There is no end, but we can end someone's plight by just being there. It's, it's so simple. Just reach out. Give generously. 
Give generously. Proverbs 2, uh, 28 verse 2 says, He who gives to the poor will never want. I, I've seen that. Uh, you guys, you've got to get this right. We don't do Seed Sunday because we want to raise funds. We don't do Seed Sunday because we want to minister. We do Seed Sunday because we know this. You will never run out. Try it. Try it. God says it about the tithe. He says it about money. If you give it to him, you'll never run out. If you keep it, there'll be a hole in your purse. I don't know how that works. You know how it works because Satan curses us. And you can have all the money in the world and keep it in the bank and not give one cent to the world, to the, to the needy in the world, and Satan curses them. And you can have no money in the world like the widow who gave her last cent and God opens the floodgates of heaven. See, giving's got nothing to do with rich or poor, but everything to be about being sons and daughters of God. That's what it's about. Proverbs 19.1 Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord you stop there for a moment. Lends to the Lord. Can you see how, how God's heart is for the poor, for the needy, for the vulnerable, for the orphans and the widows? When you give to the poor, it's in God's account. That's mine. <laughs> and I'll bless you. You're lending to me. I'll never let you down. I'll pay, I'll repay your loan. It says, and he will repay him for his deed. God will repay you for his deed. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to the Lord. Hebrews chapter 13. I'll read it again. Do not neglect to do good. Well, that word you can use is the word charity. Do not, you know, Peter and John went to pray. They left the, they met a blind man on the way and he, and he said, listen, I've got no sight and I've got no legs and uh, I need some cash. Give me some alms. Alms. A-L-M-S. You know, when we do good, we're, giving, we, we are, we're meant to be charitable. Giving away to those in need. Don't neglect to be charitable, to, be, to, be, to do good, to share what you have. Share what you have. We've all done this, haven't we? We all share what we can do better. You know, uh, uh, COVID, COVID, how, just arms, arms up. How many of you did a bit of a spring clean during that time? I, I did. Day one, I thought, flip, I'm going to use this time. I'm going to spring clean. I spring cleaned. I had nothing to do after day one because I spring cleaned everything. And then I realized I've got so much junk in my life, so much clutter. I'm keeping stuff, and it's really not. I don't need it. Share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to you. You know what that means? This is worship. You know what true worship is? Not singing songs. True worship is loving orphans and widows, giving generously to the poor. That's true worship. Paul says to the Corinthians, each man must give as they have decided in their hearts, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves cheerful givers. You know when the, when the kids got uh, sweets, some, some kids, and they're with their little friends, they love giving them. Hey? If they don't, you haven't taught them right. But kids love giving away stuff. They're like, hey, yeah, yeah, and they share it, all that sort of stuff. When they get to school, they start selling their sandwiches to their friends. You, you say to me, Paprita, the problem is so huge. Around the world, 10,000 children become orphans every day. It's, it's, it's like staggering. And, and what difference can, can we make? What difference can little old me make what, what can we do so Jesus says this he says then the king will say to those on his right 
Come, you who are blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The kingdom of God wasn't an invention when Jesus came. The kingdom of God has always been established. Jesus came to announce it. The kingdom and all that has been prepared for us in His kingdom has been from the very beginning of creation. And then He says this, speaking to all generation, in all history, to right now, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. And I was a stranger, and you invited me. And I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. And then the righteous, the Jesus follows, will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or feed you, or, or, or when did we see you a stranger, or invite you in, or naked, or clothe you? And, and when did we see you sick or in prison or come and visit you? And the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even to the least of them, to the most vulnerable of them, to the orphans and the widows, you did it to me. I don't know when it was. I think it was in the early 2000s or the late 90s. Lena and I were so so challenged by our friends. Our friends phoned us one morning. And said, there's a little child that's been abandoned. And we're going to adopt the little child. Will you come with us? And so we we didn't know if we should be excited or terrified. Because we knew John Taylor. And we knew Penny Taylor. They're such dear friends of us. And we knew their children, Lori and Stacy, and they were little kids. And they were adopting this abandoned child, left in a rubbish bin. The social welfare phoned them. I think, I think Trishy was like seven days old or something. And they found her and cleaned up, and they phoned John and Penny and said, would you look after this child? This was before all the weird stuff was happening about orphans in the country. And we went, and there she was, a, a little, oh, what's the time, man? There's this little thing, man. She was tiny. We remember cutting off a little red band around her arm. And, uh, and as a result of that, our lives radically changed. Radically changed. Because it reminded me of who I am. And the word of Jesus, I will not leave you orphaned. I will not leave you orphaned. I will, I will adopt you as a son and a daughter of mine. So we started what we call the Father Heart Foundation. At the same time, another friend of ours, Des O'Kirk, found they was also available to adopt a child. She was, they, and, uh, uh, they phoned and said, Des, we've got a little baby for you. Her, her name is now Cara, and she just got married. She fitted in a little shoebox. She was like two kilograms or something. She was minute. And so our journey began. And we started the Father Heart Foundation, which was to care for orphans and widows. And through the years, those names I read in the beginning, most of those are kids that we have been able to help through um, the Father Heart Foundation. And it's not that, it's what, what we wanted to do was mobilize people. Send ten thousand children every day.
And we are so fixated on cameras and lights and fanciness. And we're so fixated on our time. We're so selfish. And we call ourselves Jesus followers. We think we're saved. I'll tell you how you know you're saved. If your heart aches for 10,000 children every day. We can change the world one orphan at a time, one widow at a time, one poor disenfranchised human being at a time. We can do it. And you don't have to be blind seeing to know that. You can be blind and know that. We've always been committed to this as a community of faith. And if you're coming into this church and you've been finding out who we are, this is who we are. We do this stuff. And we're serious. And we're not going to let the last five years, because we've been hit as a church for the last five years. But we're writing those five years of his experience, good, bad, and ugly. And we're getting back. And we're going to be a force to be reckoned with. We want to change the lives of children and widows and the disenfranchised in our city. And it, all it requires is that we... Remember that vulnerable people matter to God. They matter to God. Don't label them. They just matter to God. And if they matter to God, they should matter to us. And so all we have to do is reach out. And I'm not going to be prescriptive. We got the foundation because we can make a difference. And we did. We have fed hundreds, thousands of kids over the years. And, uh, and, and we'll talk more about that at Seed Sunday. Um, we've seen hundreds of people from all over the world come and be a part of that. And we've partnered together as a church. We've done amazing things. But all you have to do is reach out. You don't have to start a foundation. You don't have to go and start a ministry. All you need to do is look around and go, Lord, they're vulnerable. I'm, gonna, I'm here, Lord. I'll reach out. I don't know what it looks like for you. There's no one cap fits all. But reach out. Give generously. Give generously. I'm telling you what, two rand doesn't help anyone. I'm being honest. Two rand to a person on the side of the street doesn't help them. You know what they can buy? They can buy glue. But they can't buy bread. I was driving with my friend the other day through Belita, and, and, he, and I saw he had this wad of, of 20 rand notes in his console. He did like 2,000 rand. I was hoping it would look the other way. So like. He literally, we were going to a shop. It was three minutes away. It took us 15 minutes to get there. He stopped at every robot. He stopped every five meters, and the guy came running out of the bush, and he knew their name. And he gave him 20 rand. 20 rand is nothing. For you and me, 20 rand is nothing, but 20 rand can feed someone. They might buy glue, and they might buy bread. Who cares? The Bible proverb says, give one. Give one to the poor, because it, it will help them. It will make them merry. Don't get religious with God. True religion isn't saying you can't have this and you shouldn't drink that or smoke that. True religion is reaching out. That's all it is. Don't tell poor people what they must do with their lives. Let God tell them. Give generously towards their well-being. And again, it's in your hands. You do what you have to do. I can't tell you what to do, but get the heart of God. But I'll tell you what we need to do. We have to do this. Otherwise, we fake. You see, here's it where it stops. If we ignore this, we fake. That's the fact. I'm sorry, James isn't an easy oak to preach, but he's necessary for 
and in a church that is super wealthy in South Africa, super wealthy, in a church that is obsessed with numbers and grandeur. I want to tell you something. There's more fake in the church than reality. You can't fake it till you make it. There is something that we can do together. And I want us to. I want us to do things individually and take responsibility for that as individuals in our walk with Jesus. Because Jesus followers, you are accountable for your walk with Jesus. It doesn't matter how old or young you are. You are responsible for your walk with Jesus. Don't blame the pastor or the elders or whatever you call us because you're not growing. You're not growing because you're not growing. It's your responsibility. By now, you ought to be defending the weak, fighting for their cause, feeding the poor. By now, spiritual maturity should have set in. I hope that these sunflowers are like a, a prophetic sign to us. That if we see it, we will see it. But let's do something together. I'm excited, guys. It might not look like it. But I'm excited. I'm especially excited about Seed Sunday. I think something's going to happen. Something happened last year that was beyond our imagination. I'm going to just tell you, and I'll tell you again. You know, we pledged Seed Sunday two weeks before we shut lockdown. Do you know that? And you're all filled in form. And you know that day, that one day, 260,000 rand was pledged in this church. In one day. One day. Do you know that during that year when we never gathered, when we are locked in our houses, do you know that nearly 400,000 rand of seed money came in? You tell me how that works. If you seed it, you will see it. And we were able to feed 75 to 100 families every week through COVID. God knows what's going on. His heart aches for the 10,000 children, for the widows. But I know this, if we do it together, and there is a sound that happens in the city. And the sound is this. The Lord will never leave you as an orphan. The sound of love. The sound of the king being present. I want, I want to be a part of that. I want to see the lost saved. And the least and the lost loved. That's what I want. So with that, we stand and pray. We, we need you, Lord, to break our hearts again. We so quickly become callous, hardened. We become so disobedient, selfish, self-consumed. But we need your heart. Because your heart, Lord, leaks love into a world desperately needing your love. And I pray for everyone here and everybody watching and whoever catches up. The resounding sound of your voice from heaven would be, I will never forsake you and leave you as orphans. And so I sent my son for you, to save you, to love you, to care for you. And if you're here this morning for the very first time and, you've, and you feel like, well, I'm on my own and, and I didn't know that God loves me like this, I want give you some good news. Today, Jesus Christ can introduce you to His Father in heaven, and He can call you sons and daughters. Today, you can give your life to Jesus. You can say, Lord, it doesn't matter what the world 
sees me as and how I am in this world, what matters now is I know that I can come to you and I can belong to you. And I can have a name, son and daughter. And that's good enough for me. And you know, all you need to do today is say, Lord, here I am. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I've taken so long to catch on that you're this God. So good. And I ask you to forgive me. And I ask you to, to put your spirit, your heart in my heart. So that as a son and a father, we can have a wonderful relationship. If you heard what I was saying today, and you need to do that, I'm going to ask you to stand right where you are, and I'm going to ask you to put your hand in the air and say, Lord Jesus, here I am. I, I want you. I want to give my life to you. It's not fake religion. This is real religion. Surrendering your whole life to Jesus Christ, Accepting Him as Lord and Savior, and then following Him every day of your life. So Lord, receive, receive the prayers of those who pray today. Change their hearts. Pour your Spirit upon them. Change them through the power of your presence, so that they can say, I know who my Savior is. His name is Jesus Christ. And he has introduced me to my heavenly father. And he calls me his child. And I am a child of God. And nothing can change that. Send us, Lord, into this city, into this world. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Next week will be better. It'll be more cheery. It's Mother's Day. <laughs>